Hi, right, David Gann here with another question from the question bank in topic 11.1. We're looking at uh, electromagnetic induction, Faraday's law, and Lenz's law. We have a copper rod, that's this thing here, placed on two parallel horizontal conducting rails. The rails in the copper rod are in a region of a uniform magnetic field strength, B. The field strength is normal to the plane of the conducting rods, as shown in the diagram. So it's kind of a three-dimensional diagram, where you can imagine the wires all laying flat on a table and the magnetic field going straight into the surface of the table. We have a conducting wire uh, connected between the ends of P and S uh, and a constant force parallel to the rails of magnitude F is applied to the copper rod in the direction shown. So we're going to pull the copper rod with a constant force. Um, the copper rod moves along the rails with a decreasing acceleration, which is quite interesting. Uh, so we have a constant force and a decreasing acceleration. On the diagram, draw an arrow to show the direction of induced current in the copper rod. Label this arrow with the letter I. Uh, so there's a couple of ways that you can attempt this question. I'm going to attempt to show you how to do this using the right-hand rule which is going to be tough to do in a video, so you might want to follow along with your own hand. Uh, but I'm going to use uh, an open-faced hand, and I'll let my fingers represent, on my right hand, I'll let my fingers represent the direction of the magnetic field, which is down. So those are my fingers, in line. Uh, and my thumb represents the velocity of positive charge. So the copper rod is, is full of free charges. These are electrons. And if we drag the copper rod to the left, that means that those electrons are going along for the ride. They're going to wind up moving to the left. But they're negative. So that means that the current associated with the motion of those charges to the left is to the right. So that's my thumb. Uh, so fingers are pointing into the table, and thumb is pointing along to the right. And if you look at your palm, like I'm looking at my palm, I can see that the force is now towards the top of the table. So that's the direction that the, my palm is facing. Uh, so that's the direction of the force on the electrons. The electrons are pushed towards this end of the rod. And once again, because they're electrons and negatively charged, and we define everything for positive charge, electrons moving to this end of the rod indicate a current flowing to the other end of the rod. Uh, OK, now explain by reference to Lenz's law why the induced current is in the direction you have shown. Uh, well, Lenz's law basically tells us induced currents flow in a direction that opposes the change in flux, or, or that opposes the change that generated them. So induced currents flow in the direction that opposes the change that caused them to exist in the first place. This is like a negative feedback. Um, from upon uh, building on that, we can then say that the right-hand rule indicates that this direction is upwards, or is in the direction shown in part two. Uh, part one. By considering the forces on the conduction electrons in the copper rod, explain why the acceleration of the copper rod decreases as it moves along the rails. Uh, so this is that uh, interesting question that I alluded to before. We're applying a constant force to the rods, so you might expect a constant acceleration, but the acceleration is actually reducing. So that indicates that there's some sort of opposing force that's increasing in strength. Uh, so what we might say is that uh, the, the uh, pulling force is constant, uh, and the rod is accelerating, therefore the uh, electrons in the rod are moving at higher 
and higher velocities. What, because they're moving faster, this means that they're going to experience more force, more current. Therefore, they will produce more current. They will experience more force and produce more current. Uh, this opposition current will uh, increase drag on the rod, uh, reducing the net force. I know what just happened. Okay, reducing the net force. Uh, the copper rod eventually moves with a constant speed. So at this point, the opposition force and the pulling force are equal and opposite. The induced EMF in the copper rod can be given by this expression. EMF is equal to magnetic field strength times the velocity of the rod times the length of the rod. Uh, deduce that the expression is consistent with Faraday's law. So we'll start with Faraday's law, which tells us that the induced EMF is equal to the negative change in flux with time. Now taking a look at this expression, EMF can point in one direction or another, but I see no indication of, of how important this V is, and I'm just going to have to assume that direction is not something that they're too worried about. So I'm going to leave out the negative sign, which gives us that direction. That's something that we often do with Faraday's law. And we leave it up to Lenz's law to give us the direction. So even though the direction can be had through Faraday's law, it, it's very mathematically strict to make that work. So we often ignore the direction and use Lenz's law to figure out the direction. So anyway, I'm going to drop the negative sign and ignore the direction. Uh, and then I'm going to convert this change in flux to a change in B A cosine theta, the expression for flux. Uh, taking a look at the scenario, the angle between the surface of the, of the apparatus, that's our uh, three wires, and B, so the angle between normal to that surface and B is zero. And so the cosine of theta is 1, and it goes away. At the same time, b isn't changing, so I can take it out of that delta and say b delta a delta t. Uh, next, let's take a look at what this rod is doing. It started in, say, this position, and we pulled it to this position after some time t. Uh, so it sweeps through an area described by this shape, where that's the length of the rod, and that's, the, uh, that's some distance, some change in position that we go through in a time t. Uh, so the area then is equal to uh, L delta d, and the time is still delta t. So L delta d is that area, which gives us B L delta d on delta t, which is velocity. And we get EMF is equal to B L v, or B v L, however you prefer. Finally, we want to perform a little calculation with what we have here. We know that the force that we're pulling the rod with is, is 0.32 newtons. We know the length of the rod. We know the magnetic field strength. And we know the resistance of the rod. We want to use this information to get the induced current and the speed of the rod. Uh, to get the current, there's maybe a few ways that you could try and do it. Maybe they're a little circular. But probably the easiest way is to remember that the uh, force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field is B. I L. Magnetic field strength times that current times the length of the wire that exists within the field. And that's the whole rod in this case. So that current is 
the force divided by BL, the force divided by B L, uh, which works out to 3.1 amps. Uh, and then we want the speed of the rod, which we can get from Ohm's law, E equals I R, but that EMF that's uh, producing that circuit, producing that current, uh, comes from uh, the expression that we just derived, BVL. And that's that velocity that we want. So the velocity is uh, IR on BL. We just found the current, 3.1. The resistance is given. And uh, BL we know as well. which works out to 4.4 meters per second.